forward. Uh, Hello, um, and we are here today with Bill Phillips, who is uh, sitting in for Senator Hobbs um, as a surrogate, and uh, Senator Hobbs is running for Lieutenant Governor. Would you like to go ahead with a two minute introduction? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, I, I really want to thank you for allowing me to do this. Steve would absolutely be here if he could. He has actually been activated with the National Guard. He is working in support of food banks in response to the pandemic. Uh, and food security has been a kind of a, a, I'd say below the radar issue for Steve for quite a while. Uh, he's certainly aware that more needs to be done. And knowing that he's helping families that are impacted by this is really rewarding for him. And he is uh, in charge of making sure that those food banks get, get staffed up. So thank you. And that, that really kind of goes to the heart, I think, of Steve's public service all along. I know that there have been uh, occasional votes he's taken that people may not agree with, but Steve is always up front and explains his reasoning. And in the end, his reasoning always comes down to how is this vote going to make someone's life better? When people start going back to work, for example, after the pandemic, no employer is going to be able to check their credit score and deny them a job based on their credit score. And that's because of legislation that Steve Hobbs passed very early in his uh, Senate career, that if you are applying for a job that does not have direct fiduciary responsibility or not handling money, then there's absolutely no legal method to check a credit 30 seconds. Score. So it's an honor to be here. He's helping people. I'm helping him. And uh, hopefully we'll learn your support tonight. Great. Thank you. Um, so now we'll go into the four prepared questions. And it's, I see that Mackenzie has posted them into the chat box there. Um, and we have Jason with question one. What would your priority uh, policy area be as Lieutenant Governor? Steve's priority uh, area is the uh, environment and transportation. Transportation has been a passion of his for a long time. He helped this, he helped the uh, legislature pass what Governor Inslee has called the most progressive environmentally forward-looking bill in the history of the Washington State Legislature. Uh, Steve wants to make sure that people have jobs, that they're able to get to the jobs that they have. He wants to make sure that our infrastructure is up to code for, or up to what we're going to need, I should say, uh, to take us into the future. Uh, and Steve is very concerned with everyday people, mostly because of his background. Steve was, uh, is the son of a Japanese immigrant mother who was brought up in uh, conservative Lake Stevens. So he knows what it is to be on the outside and that's who he chooses to represent. He looks around and he says, who needs a voice? Who needs to be taken care of? And how can I help people? And that's his mindset every day. Excellent, thank you. Um, question two, Alice. Um, if uh, Senator Hobbs wins this election, um, there's a chance that he might become the governor if uh, Governor Jay Inslee were to be appointed to a post in the Biden administration. Um, mm -hmm. Senator Hobbs would also face a budget crisis due to the impact of the coronavirus. How would mm -hmm. he deal with that budget crisis? Look, the budget rules at, in the wake of this crisis are going to have to be completely rewritten. The state's going to have to look at priorities. I can tell you that Senator Hobbs is committed to ensuring that if, if he can help it, no one's going to get left behind by this. He wants to make it as easy as possible for people to get back to work. He wants to make it easy for people to keep their homes uh, in particular. And this is something that came to play in the last uh, financial crunch that we had back in the, during the 2008 recession. Steve Hobbs not only helped people keep their homes by working with uh, realtors and banks, but he also held banks accountable for foreclosures. And if any time a bank foreclosed during that period, they had to put money into a fund that would go into compensating homeowners who had their homes foreclosed. So when we come out of this crisis, we're gonna be looking at a lot of similar problems for people. And there is no one, in my opinion, that 
would look after people better than Steve Hobbs if he were governor of this state. But he's running for lieutenant governor, so there's that. And I apologize. I actually missed that there was a second half of the question. Can I, may I ask that part now? Oh, no, yeah, um, by all means. It, the second half of the question is regressive taxation strains low and middle income families and reduced revenue mm -hmm. collection curtails our ability to invest in vital infrastructure. Uh, would mm -hmm. he pledge to veto budget cuts to needed public services? And what taxes would he look to raise in order to deal with this crisis? Steve is, um, how can I put this? When we, we look at public services, Steve firmly believes that public services should stay public, right? Uh, in his past campaigns, he has been in, endorsed by public employees because he understands that the legislation that comes out of Olympia affects them and he's not gonna do anything to hurt them. As for how we're going to get funds to recover from this crisis specifically, um, Steve is going to look at that. We don't know yet what the budget shortfalls are going to be. We have projections and Steve knows something will need to be done. One of the things that he has talked about before and that he is committed to, to seeing through in the legislature is a $20 per ton tax seconds. on carbon emissions. And that could help plug a few uh, budget holes. So there you are. Great, thank you. Uh, question three, Hannah. Yeah. Um, does Senator Hobbs support a just transition to deal with climate change, such as the Green New Deal, uh, which would bring carbon emissions down to zero in the next decade or two while investing in those most impacted? who are often low-income, marginalized communities of color. Steve is, is definitely a proponent of the environment. When you ask specifically about a Green New Deal, that's sort of a, an umbrella term that covers a lot of things. There's things in there that he supports. There's things in there he'd probably have to be convinced on. So I don't really know what specific policies you're talking about in terms of a Green New Deal. But Steve does believe that green energy should be encouraged, that sustainability is important. Uh, because he's got three kids and he knows they're going to have to live in this world for a long time. So he is absolutely committed to keeping our environment as pristine as possible and cleaning up the effects of climate change. He's definitely a believer in climate change. Uh, he's not a skeptic or anything like that. And he was proud to be part of passing a very sustainable transportation package. And I mean, as far as, like I said, specific policies in the Green New Deal, I don't know, we kind of have to go through them one by one. And most of them, I would say I'd have to call him, but I can tell you he is committed to sustainability and clean renewable energy, making sure that the planet is inhabitable for the next generation. Excellent. Uh, question number four, Brittany. Uh, would Senator Hobbs support efforts to combat the economic impacts of systemic racism by supporting policies that target inequality in areas like housing, education, and intergenerational wealth? That's an absolutely easy one for me to answer. I don't even have to qualify it. That's a yes. And again, that goes back to Steve's own background. He is a person of color who suffered from discrimination, who knew what it was like to be ostracized because of the color of his skin, the shape of his face. And he does not want to see anyone else go through that. He certainly uh, will promote policies uh, that will prevent people from being discriminated against. He is a believer in equity when it comes to discrimination. Great, thank you. Um, now we're going to go ahead and open it up into follow-up questions, and the responses to these are one minute apiece. Um, and I want to go ahead and ask the board if you have a follow-up question, please raise your hand, or um, there's a, a raise your hand button in the participant screen, or you can write me in chat. Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds. Sure. Mackenzie, yes, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, a question that I have is, um, in April 2019, um, Senator Hobbs voted no on bills that um, established a business tax to finance a higher education fund and increases the B&O tax on large financial institutions. Uh, and those are things that our local legislators here in the 36th actually voted to support. Um, so a question that I have is, uh, does Senator Hobbs believe in higher taxes on wealthy organizations or even a capital gains tax as a whole? 
He does. What I can tell you, though, is Steve is really particular when it comes to legislation. If he looks at a bill and he says, well, yes, this answer is part of the problem, but not the other, or this will help, this will help these families, but these other uh, underserved populations are going to be hurt by it. You know, and I, I can't really speak to his mindset on those specific topics that you're talking about. I can tell you that he has taken very progressive votes when it comes to uh, things like promoting dreamers, uh, making sure that dreamers are able to get educated, making sure that children of people that are, are serving in uniform aren't discriminated against in the public education system. Uh, you know, and again, if you've got a specific, a specific piece of that legislation, I could go back to him and, and ask about it. Uh, but I, I, I would not be here if I thought Steve was all about protecting uh, anyone but un underserved individuals and families. Great, thank you. Uh, any further follow-ups? You raise your hand or write in the chat box, please. I will ask a question. Um, you know, uh, Lieutenant Governor has, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an executive role within our state. And um, I'm curious uh, uh, if you can talk a little bit about uh, 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 Steve's background with um, managing. With man well, Right yeah. now, he's in. He, right now, he's 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 managing staffing food banks across the state of Washington for the National Guard, and that is where, when I talk about his leadership and his ability to manage, that is going to go into his uh, background in the U.S. Army and in the Washington National Guard. Uh, he has been trusted to oversee huge projects. He has been trusted uh, to lead um, to lead units, and I have no doubt that he would, he, he would be comfortable stepping up into an executive role in the state. Excellent. Uh, any other questions? All right. Um, I can have, ask another. Um, so uh, let's see here. With 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 being in the lieutenant governor role, is there anything that he would like to change um, from the current way that uh, it's operating? I'm, I'm sure there is. Uh, can I tell you specifically what they are? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, Steve Steve is one uh, who has made a reputation and a career out of maximizing opportunities, not for himself, but for how he can be a better servant of others and. I believe that if he gets there and he sees something that the lieutenant governor can do that can help more people, then that's what he's going to be all about doing. And I realize that that's kind of a puff answer. It doesn't really contain a, a specific, but uh, I'm not Steve Hobbs. I'm, I'm just speaking for him. And I can, I can speak to his character and the stuff that he uh, gave me uh, to look at as background. Uh, but so the best I can do to that is say that I'm, I'm confident that he would as long as he saw where it would help someone. Great, thank you. Um, we'll have Hannah and then Mackenzie. Hi, um, I have a question about um, what you think Senator Hobbs might do uh, if in the position of Lieutenant Governor um, in either of the potential outcomes or maybe a unforeseen other outcome of uh, all of the lawsuits around 976. I know that that's something he was I'm pretty passionate about as a um, you know member of the transportation committee, um, and it does seem like something that potentially the like executive level could have some sway on if the right person were in the job. So I would love to hear what you think about that. Yeah, Steve. I, you know we talked about transportation stuff earlier. Nine seven six just absolutely guts transportation. It it guts transit. It guts sustainability. Steve is really super passionate about that, as, as you note just from his comments in the press, uh, where he has talked about how backwards this will take the state. If there is a role for him uh, as Lieutenant Governor to step up uh, and, and be part of, of, over, of, of overturning the effects of that disastrous uh, decision, that Iman bill, um, then that's what he's gonna do. 
he he cares too much about transportation to stand still and just let it be undone. Great, thank you. Mackenzie. Thanks. Uh, another question I have is kind of similar to the last one. This one is in regards to the uh, the no vote by uh, Senator Hobbs this year, um, back in January for the repealing the death penalty, which again is something that our local Senator Carlisle here supported. So my question is uh, just basically just his general thought on thoughts on the death penalty and uh, if there's any kind of explanation on that vote. Um, I knew some of his I saw some uh, readings about some of his reasonings for the tax questions I asked before, but not a whole lot for this one. For the death penalty, right. Um, I've had conversations with him, so I'm kind of going to delve into that experience a little bit because I've talked to him about the death penalty because I, I, I personally have feelings about the death penalty and I have, I've talked to Steve about those. The main, the main point that he makes consistently is the death penalty is a huge bargaining chip for prosecutors. If you can get the death penalty taken off the table in exchange for information that is gonna help victims cope with loss, in exchange for information that is going to help other crimes be solved, that's something that would not exist if the death penalty were taken off the table. Steve uh, is not out to execute as many people as possible. He doesn't think that, uh, that we should be killing people as a matter of course but he does see it as an important prosecute, prosecutorial tool Ten that seconds. would hurt people if it were taken away. And we're right back to where he does not want to do anything that is going to hurt anyone. Great, thank you. Um, any further questions? Any other questions? You can write me in the chat or uh, raise your hand. All right. Well, I'm going to give you a minute um, for just one of my questions uh, to just kind of let you talk about why uh, you're so enthusiastic to support uh, Senator Hobbs, uh, uh, for Lieutenant Governor. I keep forgetting. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you, you know, the, the first time that I ever talked to Steve Hobbs on the telephone, and, and we laugh about this all the time, was when I was chair of uh, the Snohomish County Democrats and I wrote a letter to the editor attacking him and uh, because I disagreed with him. And he actually called me and said, hey, let's talk about this. You're a party leader and I, I don't wanna be on bad terms with you. Let's get together and let's talk. And we did and a friendship developed uh, out of that. And so Steve and I have been friends uh, going on 15 years now uh, after, that, after that. Steve is one of the most caring, compassionate, committed public servants that I have ever met. And I, I work in consulting, so I have known a, a lot of people in politics who say one thing seconds. to the cameras, one thing to the party, and another thing in private. Steve has never said a thing to me in private that I've not heard him say publicly. Great, thank you. Um, I think that actually is about time. We're like on the cusp and I don't have any more personal questions. So, so I don't know if anybody else does. If you do, if we do, we can um, take it. All right. Would you like to go ahead and give a, a one minute um, wrap up? I'm pretty sure I just did because there's not really a ton to add to that except to say that I believe that the state of Washington would be absolutely well served to have Steve Hobbs as Lieutenant Governor. He is someone who has governed with what I consider to be progressive principles while representing a almost Republican leaning district. He is the most progressive state Senator that the 44th district has ever had. He sometimes can't come out and, and talk about things in the way that uh, a lot of us activists on the grounds would like to hear them spoken about. But if you look at his votes, with the exception of, of two or three nitpicks here and there, down the line, you can see where he voted for marriage equality before the Supreme Court case, even though he got phone call after phone call to his office telling him that they were gonna vote him out and that it was the wrong thing to do, he did it anyway. He's not afraid to stand up and do the right thing when it counts. And I'm proud to know him as a friend. I'm proud to be helping him on this campaign. And I am proud to be here representing him to, to you. 
Thank you so much. <laughs>